For this video, I'm going to take you on a virtual bike ride to the land bridge that traverses Interstate 75. This Cross Florida Greenway is a very long scenic park that pretty much crosses the entire state of Florida. Um, I'm not sure if they've completed the whole thing, but they've definitely completed most of the sections out here west, you know, Ocala, Denellen, those type of places, because I believe they're all connected on this side of the state. I'm not sure if that is the case when you get up towards Jacksonville. This is a pretty long, uninterrupted trail. You'll see that I came in off the 49th Avenue trailhead just because that was the closest that was the closest entrance to where I was staying at the time. But um, there's also a land bridge trailhead on the east side of this particular land bridge. And I believe that is a little closer, whereas I had to travel about two and a half miles to get to the land bridge from the 49th Avenue trailhead. So you saw the teaser video where I kind of point out the horse manure on the bike trail. And I really want to kind of address this pet peeve of mine. The bike trail that is paved is for bikes and for joggers. And the non-paved sections of this place where you'll see the horse crossings, you know, there are certain sections with the white lines that cross this bike path. That's where the horses cross. But the, the equestrian usage is mostly for the unpaved sections, basically all of them. And if you even notice on the land bridge when we get to it, you'll see that uh, to, the, to the camera left position is the paved section for the bikes and the joggers. And to the right side um, is the soil section, which is where the equestrian usage is supposed to be. So that really is ticking me off that there are asshole horse owners who are basically having their animals crap on the bike path. I mean, you've got your own designated area. We have our designated area. I don't go to your house and crap on your driveway because I'm a bike rider. No, it doesn't work that way. You should respect the people who are also sharing this area with you. Just because you're a rich snob that has to show off with your horse doesn't mean you get the on the bike path. Okay, I think we've uh, cleared the air. And that was my public service announcement for today. So this Cross Florida Greenway is kind of an unusual development. A lot of people are probably just scratching their head trying to figure out how this thing came about. And you probably can quickly um, realize, especially for the cynical people in the group, that politicians would never have taken on a huge project like this as a park. They're just not into that kind of stuff. You know, they're all about making money. And that's where this thing came from. This actually began in the 1930s as the cross florida canal project so the intent was to build a canal that basically shaved three days of travel off of uh, boat traffic around the state of florida it takes three days to traverse the florida straits for cruise ships and uh, barges and all that kind of stuff and this thing would have cut right through the state you come in around yankee town and exit around Jacksonville, Florida. And that 172 mile canal path was a lot shorter than the probably thousand miles it takes to travel all the way around the peninsula in deep water. So this project started and stopped a couple times. The first time um, it was authorized by FDR 
1935 and it was part of the New Deal. They were trying to create jobs, that kind of stuff. So they pumped a ton of money into it and then the federal money kind of ran out and then they stopped. Started again in the 40s. They did some more work and then halted again. Started again around the 1960s and that's when most of the development happened in the 60s. Um, John F. Kennedy was a huge fan of this project uh, to create the canal across and Lyndon uh, B. Johnson actually came down here and apparently did some demolition work. He uh, used dynamite to blow up a section uh, near Palatka to get started. So this thing was about a third finished when it got halted in 1971. And it's weird that the environmentalists were celebrating this failure because they already dug most of this thing. It was pretty much, I mean, all the major infrastructure was done. They basically were going to use existing, you know, St. John's River and other existing locks, uh, the Wicklahoochee. So there was only a couple sections that were actually going to be man-made. So this thing was pretty much done and finished when they halted construction, for the most part. They had sunk about $80 million over the, those 30 years from 1935 through the 1960s. So $80 million adjusting for inflation is well in excess of $120 million in today's dollars. So they pumped a ton of money into this project, and then they just stopped when they were almost done. So that's the story of Florida right there. Poor planning, but let's spend a lot of money on something that we're never going to finish. When this canal project ultimately failed, there was a pretty astute comment made by one of the biggest proponents of the canal system. His name was uh, Congressman Charles Bennett, and he was from Jacksonville. And he made this particular quote back in 1971. Walt Disney's Never Never Land of Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse will damage Florida's ecology more than the now stymied cross-state barge canal. And he was totally right. It's pretty obvious to me that Marjorie Housecart didn't give a crap about the environment. She just didn't want this canal project in her backyard. That's the only reason she blocked it. For her to be so busy patting herself on the back in 1971 when there was massive, absolutely massive destruction by paving over a bunch of sensitive wetlands and green areas when they were making Interstate 4 and paving over 43 square miles of Walt Disney World and Epcot Center and Animal Kingdom. And don't get me wrong, those are beautiful attractions that I love and are very dear to my heart. But you can't be a bigger hypocrite than to complain about the environmental impact of a canal and then uh, ignore all that destruction happening just 50 miles to the south of her. Give me a break. So I'm not sure it's obvious on camera, but there's some pretty dramatic elevation changes when you're heading on this bike path. Uh, when you're traveling eastbound towards the land bridge, you go up some pretty steep inclines, and you really got to pump the pedals to get the bike up the hill. Um, this is pretty awesome when you're heading west towards the car, and you'll see uh, when I'm heading back towards the parking lot, uh, it's almost like riding a roller coaster because you're going downhill and you've got all these tight corners. It's the first bike path I've ever seen that actually has posted speed limits for the bikes. I'm serious. It's it's crazy. Um, you'll definitely see them on the way back. Uh, like on some of the corners, they recommend a top speed of 10 miles an hour. And my bike doesn't have a speedometer. I have no idea how fast I'm going. And I'm, I'm just going to go what's comfortable for me. So uh, it is kind of funny.
You'll notice that they do have occasional park benches on this bike trail, but it's pretty sporadic. I don't think there's really any rhyme or reason to how they're spaced apart. And the only restrooms available were at the trailheads themselves. Basically, there's a porta potty in each parking lot, whether you're coming from Landbridge or 49th Avenue. There's no structures or facilities at the land bridge itself. Not that I could find anyways. This particular bike path goes through a lot of nice wooded areas. It's not really shady though, like the uh, Donellan trailhead that I took a ride through on County Road 39, that definitely had a lot more shade than this one. So even though there's a lot of trees, you're still kind of in the sun. Although compared to the Wicklahoochee Trail, which is pretty much wide out in the open, there's no like vegetation really close to the, the path at all, that's really hot in the summertime. This this would probably be okay because there's a lot of trees that will give you at least partial cover. But if you're looking for a place to beat the heat, then that Denellen Trail is probably a better option when it comes to like a summer ride. Because it will get fairly hot on this one, you can tell. I will say this, I've taken a lot of bike rides in Florida so far and I've been really lucky, uh, I haven't encountered any bears. There were quite a few posted signs on this particular bike path about uh, bear activity and I really need to start packing uh, like that bear sprayer, the uh, bell or whatever the hell they use to, to repel bears because I keep getting lucky. I think I'm kind of been a little lazy because I'm riding a bike and I figure I can outrun a bear if I encounter one on the bike but still moving forward I really am going to start buying some bear spray so I can at least carry something just in case I get into a situation. Well, I finally arrived at the land bridge. And to reiterate what I said earlier in the teaser, this does remind me a lot of High Line Park in New York City. For those who've never been, High Line Park is actually a converted elevated train that has been turned into a one and a half mile walking park. And it's beautiful. And this one, not quite as long as that, but it's also an interesting structure. Judging from the high sides of this structure, I believe this is was originally built as an elevated canal for barges. 
you really can get some really nice scenic pictures if you're trying to take photos of uh, cars passing. Um, not the greatest structure for bird watching because the, the sides are so high you really can't see much. Uh, and again, I, I believe the high sides are a result of this was built to be holding water, if I'm not mistaken. So the concrete structures are really robust on the sides, but that limits visibility. I filmed quite a few bike rides now for this YouTube channel, and I have to say that this is probably the most interesting one that I've taken. I, I've just, it, this is just such a unique structure. You know, most of the other bike paths have um, pedestrian bridges over major highways and that type of stuff, so it's not uncommon. It's just that this one is so peculiar. I've never seen a pedestrian bridge with this many planted you know trees and vegetation and all this stuff i mean that that's the name the land bridge obviously but it's just a unique thing to to kind of um hang out on and, and and spend a little time you know uh unwinding although a lot of people might be you know laughing at that because of all the traffic and it's not the quietest place to be above right above interstate 75 because it is pretty noisy from all the the passing trucks but i don't know I, there's something genuinely interesting about this particular structure um it's so quirky and obviously it's such an afterthought to turn into a pedestrian bridge that i can't help but love this place i mean i did read up on this particular structure Apparently, it was developed by the Environmental Protection Agency to create um, a right-of-way above Interstate 75 that wildlife would actually use. So the reason why there's so many plants was to try to fake animals into thinking that this was just a, a natural structure. Apparently, this is the first time uh, any of these land bridges have been built in the entire United States. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what they're claiming uh, on the information I read on the EPA website. So this is the downhill section of the bike path that I was talking about earlier in the video. This section of the the trail is, is really fun going downhill. I mean, I was definitely cruising and taking advantage of gravity for some serious momentum. Am I doing 10 miles an hour? I doubt it. I'm probably cruising closer to 20, but... I'm kind of happy that I didn't have to slow down. There was nobody in the, the park at the moment, so didn't have to slow down for traffic, so I was just cruising. This is pretty funny to me. I'm on a designated bicycle path, and there are posted speed limits for the bicycles. Are you serious right now? How many bicycles have you seen with speedometers on them? How the hell are we supposed to know how fast we're going? I mean, come on. This is so ridiculous. I mean, I could see it... If, you know, you posted like a dangerous curve or, you know, caution, sharp turn, something like that. But a 10 mile an hour speed limit for bicycles. Get out of here.
this is definitely one of the more scenic uh, bike trails out there. I do think the Denellen Trail is superior when it came to the overall scenery. I just liked how that one kind of is cut through, you know, a bunch of swamps, kind of intersects the Rainbow River, and it just a little more interesting when it came to the water features over there. This one really doesn't come close to any kind of water. I think the pedestrian bridge on the Denellen Trail is superior for bird watching and photography. So if that's your ultimate goal, then you probably should go to the Denellen Trail over this one. Like I said, because of how they constructed the land bridge, there's really not a lot of good photography opportunities. I do think this is my favorite bike trail in Ocala, and I've been to quite a few of them. This is definitely the nicest natural one that I've been to. I didn't really care for Baseline Trail as much just because of two reasons. Number one, it was just kind of a random maze of intersecting bike paths and it was easy to get lost over there. Uh, the other thing I didn't like about it was it was really crowded, at least the day I went. When you're riding a bike, you kind of want to, I don't know, crank it up and put it in high gear and kind of cruise through the, the scenery. and there were so many damn pedestrians at Baseline Trail that I was constantly slowing down and trying not to hit people and it's kind of frustrating and you really you know I'm maybe call me antisocial but I, I just like to hit the open road and kind of unwind on the, the bike ride and you can't do that at Baseline definitely can do it here So the 49th Avenue Trailhead, you know, the trailhead that I used to access this greenway, is located in a subdivision known as Marion Oaks. This is basically just a housing development. It's kind of an unusual location for this trailhead. It's really out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm telling you, when I started cruising back towards the car, I was super hungry and I was remarking it, man, you could probably make a killing if you opened a restaurant right next to this trailhead just putting it out here you know for those entrepreneurs out there if you want to make a killing on some sort of restaurant you know maybe maybe not even a full restaurant maybe just like a convenience store where you're just selling like cold drinks like Gatorade and Powerade and whatever monster drinks even P probably a huge opportunity uh, and there was plenty of uh, open parcels right across the street from this particular trailhead, so maybe somebody should jump on that.
So on some of my previous bike ride videos, I've noticed in the comment section that people are always wondering why the camera seems to go soft focus after a while uh, in these bike rides. Well, that soft focus on the outsides, uh, you know, on the left and the right, as you can see in the video, are actually it's actually humidity and condensation building up on the outside of the GoPro. And it doesn't matter how often I do these bike rides, I always seem to forget to wipe the camera off about halfway through. And yeah, that's the humidity that builds up and it always makes the um, outside edges of the camera frame kind of blurry. So I apologize for that. I uh, I forgot to, to wipe it off uh, about halfway through and it does go a little soft on us uh, the later we get into this ride. So what's the bottom line for the Land Bridge and 49th Avenue Trailhead? I've been on a lot of scenic bike rides, and even before I was uh, doing this YouTube channel, I would take a lot of these um, nature paths, and this is probably among the best in the entire state of Florida. I do think this one has a lot going for it. The whole cross Florida greenway is beautiful. The opportunity to go for like a bike ride from the east coast to the west coast is eventually going to happen. I don't believe it's finished yet. Um, I'd have to research that more, but I know the intent is to make this uh, connect both coasts and eventually it will be a, a full 110 mile uh, bike path. So that's pretty amazing to me. And as you can imagine, there's plenty of opportunities for exploration out here. So when it comes to uh, all the bike paths that are in the state of Florida, this is the one I would probably recommend you checking out first. I just think the scenery is a lot better than what I saw on the Withlacoochee. I mean, the Withlacoochee State Trail was pretty cool too, but there's not much to see on that one, especially if you're on the north end of it. The south end is where all the impressive scenery is. Uh, but overall, I highly recommend uh, this particular bike trail. It's it's as, pretty much as good as it gets when it comes to the ones available in Florida. So I accessed the land bridge using the 49th Avenue trailhead. The parking is pretty limited here, so just be aware of that. I believe there is a larger parking lot on the other trailhead, the one that is called land bridge to the east. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like and subscribe. Every time you click on that like button, it really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. And I really appreciate all the support you've given me so far.